star that lights the road I take this ride Just drive Welcome to the uh, notebook. It's not exactly what I picked up, but who I found, and that's one of the mascots down here in the uh, Lotus Garage. Look, he can go all day, this little fella. And uh, talking of uh, great people who can go all day, all credit to Lotus. This is Ayo, who's uh, Roman Grosjean's uh, race engineer you hear on here, and they're having a, a little party. I think they deserve it. Uh, a word also for these guys in the yellow shirts here over here, Bob, Renault, because that was another all Renault podium. We've had quite a few this year, what with uh, Red Bull 1-2s and Lotus drivers uh, joining them up there. But that was the first time that a Lotus driver in the form of Roman Grosjean has been on the podium without Kimi Raikkonen. So great drive from Grosjean. Grosjean and Lotus were the only team who could get close to Red Bull Racing today. And I thought that was significant. So uh, you notice Remy Tafan from Renault up on the podium. He actually had to find a Red Bull shirt from somewhere because he normally wears one of these yellow uh, Renault shirts. So uh, uh, he actually had to grab Nick someone's Red Bull shirt to be the team representative uh, up on there. Yes, you might have to take the lens cap off for that, mister. Yeah, thank you. There you go. Hello, look, him taking a picture of us, taking a picture of him. This is uh, Mansour Ijaz just behind me uh, with a young friend, uh, the potential uh, investor uh, in uh, the team. So perhaps this might persuade him to hand over the cash. But still, yeah, all credit to uh, Lotus, especially as Red Bull had them on the ropes, strategically speaking. With the second stops, Red Bull could end up any, any moment undercut and pitted Sebastian Vettel before they pitted Roman Grosjean, but they didn't do that. And that's how uh, Grosjean was able uh, to stay ahead for as long as he did, ruin Mark Webber's chances of getting ahead of Sebastian Vettel and ultimately finished third. So good for them. What it does mean is that it's brought uh, the fight between Lotus and Mercedes into much sharper focus in the constructors. Did Mark Webber have to do a three stop or was he uh, poleaxed into it, forced into it to try and get Sebastian Vettel somehow team order wise uh, into the lead the question mark is the second stop sorry you can come back here Pete now look at this second stop so the first uh, stint he had to pit because his tires were going off but look at this second stint here can you see it was only a 13 lap stint but look at Weber's lap times 37.9 37.9 37.8 37.7 37.4 37.7 so they were going pretty well and he was doing fairly well pulling away or keeping the gap uh, to Sebastian Vettel so that's the question mark that I've got. It's this second stop. Did he really, really need to make that second stop? Or could he, as he said to Natalie, have carried on? I mean, clearly the, the third stint here was 17 laps. So that was much longer than the 13 laps. And of course, 11 laps on the end was all that he could do because he was on the medium tire. And that's all that really it would uh, stand up to in the race. So the analysis there of the lap times does suggest that he was called in a little early for that second uh, that second uh, stop so we will see um sebastian vettel ichiban he said uh, ichiban isn't some kind of skin complaint it means number one in uh, japanese of course jensen buttons uh triathlon team is called ichiban is it not so uh, he's saying that but um uh we're apparently going to have a look at some uh i don't know what they are but uh, you can see them i can't it's sebastian vettel apparently so he's with the fans, so uh, lovely, uh, that is. Um, yeah, uh, talking about Sebastian Vettel, uh, he was saying, excuse me, as I just reorganize uh, uh, my papers, should have stayed on those shots longer, shouldn't we? Um, as, uh, as he was talking in the uh, circuit about, uh, just in the, in the pen up here, about uh, India. He's saying India is a circuit I like, we're going there next. He's uh, done that uh, very well, he's always done very well there. And he's looking forward to that. He's not thinking about the championship. But uh, then we have a new headline from Sebastian Vettel in that German triple world champion, soon to be quadruple world champion, says Scott was better driver than him. And uh, he's actually talking about Jim Clark because, of course, he broke Jim one of Jim Clark's records, uh, I believe, uh, here today. 
and um, he said, uh, Jim Clark, yeah, he left Formula One too soon. So welcome back to the, the notebook, or as they say in uh, Native American, dances with forklifts. Uh, as we've, so we've heard, the only thing I'd say about Mark Webber, just before we get on to Ferrari, is that Webber said that I couldn't race everybody with a, with a two or a three stop, Placido Domingo. Uh, I, with a two or a three stop, I had enough trouble racing Grosjean, but I couldn't cover Vettel as well. So that's how Mark uh, really referred to it uh, as uh, his race. Now you can see in the back here, there is Fernando Alonso uh, just answering uh, the media's questions as we open the door for uh, the uh, chaps who are actually uh, coming in. Go on, Pete, go and have a look. Go and see what his mood looks like and what it must be like as he's just um, answering some questions at the moment in what language is that? That is English. Uh, he's just saying, you know, what he's looking forward to in the next few races, but they didn't have the pace here. That's plenty, Pete. Uh, they didn't have the pace. Uh, fourth was a pretty decent result, but again, made it hard for themselves uh, in qualifying and the Felipe Massa thing, but lost far too much time, lost far too much time behind uh, Hulkenberg. And then by the time that they were 20 seconds down through everybody else, uh, it was really game over for Fernando Alonso. So uh, that's him uh, in uh, Fourth, that's Alonso in fourth. Fifth was Kimi Raikkonen. Now, I asked Lotus whether that was disappointing. I felt he was slightly off the boil today. And they said, well, no, ninth to fifth really isn't bad for Kimi Raikkonen. But I don't know, didn't have the pace of Grosjean pretty much all weekend. Did make uh, a mistake earlier on and go off uh, in Friday practice and didn't seem to recover from there. Great shout for Nico Hulkenberg. Is he going to Lotus next year? Well, probably. Are we going to hear that before India? Probably not. Well, you never know. But uh, Or is he going to go to McLaren? That would be uh, equally uh, amazing if they manage to or decide to dump Sergio Perez after one year. It could happen. It could absolutely happen, especially as if their new money, their new title sponsor, isn't Mexican. That's kind of what we've been waiting for, but uh, uh, we don't know. Of course, their current title sponsor runs out uh, at the end of the year. And um, it was a good start for Hulkenberg, and he actually, it was a well-timed first stop that got Hulkenberg into that fifth position, which later became sixth after Kimi passed him. It was a brilliantly timed first stop, and he and he actually c carried on um, and uh, carried on with uh, in his place in sixth. That's right. So Gutierrez seventh. Uh, great job uh, for Gutierrez, and uh, he was so relieved to get his uh, to get his uh, points that um, he actually forgot to be weighed, and he sprinted out to the uh, to the post race. Uh, interview area without being weighed. So um, Gutierrez had to be called straight back in. Uh, Nico Rosberg, you've heard all about that. Looks like he actually jumped the... Uh he jumped uh, the light, uh, which wasn't a good uh, thing to do, and then particularly totally earned uh, his uh, drive-through penalty, uh, which is interesting, as we just passed uh, Force India um, as another place that uh, potentially uh, for that uh, Nico Hulkenberg uh, could end back up at, but that might be a bit of a step backwards uh, for him if Lotus decide to go uh, with Felipe Massa. Now, let's talk a bit, little bit about Force India because they had a terrible afternoon. Paul DeResta was talking about a setup direction that uh, he has changed, if you're listening earlier in the program. He's tried one setup direction, doesn't like it for the last couple of races, and is going back uh, to another way. Paul, um, yeah, good to get somewhere near the points in 11th. Uh, Jev and Daniel Ricciardo at Toro Rosso are very, very disappointed. I'll tell you about that in a second, because Valtteri Bottas, he's just scratching his nose in case you're wondering, um, should feel very annoyed because Pastor Maldonado barged him off the, sh off the track and overtook him for 17th. Maldonado was 16th. Bottas gave his teammate room uh, so as not to cause an accident, but Maldonado was very, very, uh, very, very a bit rude uh, there. Um, yeah, I was going to tell you about... Uh, Force uh, about the Toro Rosso. Uh, Jean Eric Verne, quite quiet race, uh, nothing especially uh, special with that, that. But Daniel Ricciardo, absolutely fuming, effing and blinding on the radio. Uh, I can tell you about uh, uh, his penalty. Really doesn't think it was justified. He said he lost time, if anything, going wide on the outside of 130R. He was absolutely furious, as are the rest of uh, the team. They don't think it's justified uh, at all, even though we got a smile from the chap there. And just wrapping it up, uh, Sergio Perez, 15th. 
uh, which I forgot to say about with a very underwhelming race, but having to go to a three stop and then a puncture as well. That was the reason he went down there. Pick Chilton uh, as the last runner. And we're waiting to hear as to the uh, a portion of blame with Guido van der Gaard and Jules Bianchi, who crashed out. Uh, Weber, though, got the fastest lap, though, on a day when perhaps he made one stop too many. Watch all six Sky Sports channels on your mobile and online.